The world's first lab-grown burger is being unveiled this morning. The question is, would you eat it? NBC's Keir Simmons is in London with the details. Keir, good morning to you. Hey, Savannah, good morning. Just to reassure you, uh, this is a normal, uh, everyday burger, but inside the building behind me, a group of brave people are preparing a burger that costs $325,000 to create. And whilst the patty inside looks just like this one, it's not meat as we've, known, as we've known it. The all-American hamburger. It makes you think of herds of cattle, the Great Plains, family-run farms, and laboratories. It may not look appetizing at first, but beef from test tubes could be the future. Scientists have been busy proving that beef can be grown in a lab. From cattle stem cells, beet juice, saffron, caramel and breadcrumbs are added, and a burger is born. Today, they want to show that people can eat it. Very good. In New York over the weekend, folks weren't convinced. I think it's disgusting. Maybe it could be cheaper. I think it's pretty awesome that they can do that. It's been estimated that every American spends around $270 on beef each year, eating 61 pounds of the meat annually. But all the steaks and hamburgers increasingly popular around the world, too, are costly. Cattle consume a good deal of food that could feed people, and cattle produce a lot of environmental damage. In some countries, ancient forests are cleared for cattle to graze. Dr. Mark Post and his team are working to convince the world that a more environmentally friendly meat is needed and can be made. 20% of all the greenhouse gas emission comes from livestock. So a um, vegetarian with a hummer is actually better for the environment than a meat eater, than a, a meat eater with a bicycle. The scientists say mass production could be a decade away, but America's beef farmers may not welcome the idea. Will laboratory meat drive down farmers' income? They already have to sell cheap. And cattle farming adds billions to America's bank account. Right now, this artificial meat is rare. Some call it Frankenburgers. But one day, we may all be eating it. It's going to be unsafe. So and Savannah, can... just yes. in the last Sorry. few minutes, yeah. they have begun cooking and eating uh, this uh, laboratory-made burger. We wait to see how it tastes. That's going to be one of the crucial questions, right? Because the question of whether or not people on the street are going to want to eat this burger, well, it matters how it tastes. Yeah, i got to get the taste right. Keir Simmons in London, thank you so much. We actually talked to Mark Poss, the man behind this new burger, earlier this morning. He's a professor at a university in the Netherlands, and I began by asking him for his honest opinion, since he has tasted it, how does it taste? Uh, it tastes like beef. It's not quite there yet, but it's a very good start to um, uh, improve afterwards. This took years. This is a milestone that we're seeing this morning. What is your goal? Is it to show that this can be done? Yeah, that's exactly what the goal is. It can be done. We have now proven that we can grow meat outside of the body of the cow uh, using the same cells um, and using regular uh, culture principles that we took from uh, the medical field. This burger is worth $325,000. I know you have an anonymous donor. Um, I expect that you would think the price would come down. If you could make it more efficient, eventually you could get it at a competitive price? Oh, absolutely. Of course, it's our goal to uh, provide an alternative solution to uh, meat production right now and to be able to uh, produce meat in an in a ethical and environmentally friendly way. And we're pretty positive that we can make this also cost effective when we, once we scale it up and, and improve the techniques further. And to be clear, this is not a meat substitute. It's meat. No, it's, it's meat. It's not a meat substitute. You know, we think that people will continue eating meat, and the World Health Organization predicts that that will be the case, and actually global demand is going to increase. But, Professor, I have to ask you, for some people, there's a certain gross-out factor. They'll think it's kind of disgusting to eat something that has been created in a test tube. What do you say to them? Well, you know, if we are producing meat, and it, it's exactly the same, it's just produced in a different way. So you have to ask yourself the question, uh, 20, 30 years from now, if you see this in the supermarket, you see two exactly the same products, they taste the same, they feel the same, they smell the same. One is made in a factory, the other way, one is made in a cow. You know the environmental issues with the cow-produced uh, steak. Um, 
there is probably an eco tax on it, and maybe there is even a label that there is uh, animal welfare issues with it. You know, what are you going to choose then? And I, I think a lot of people will uh, then choose for the alternative. Our interview earlier this morning with Professor Mark Post.